Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northside's and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor taste combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. All right, places, please. The Daily Make Show is on deck. Guitars plugged in. Drums ready to go. Chickens, other animals, and action. This is the Daily Mix Show on The Rock with Taryn Daly and Steve Miggs. While listening to the Daily Mix Show, please refrain from any unnecessary finger gesturing. 99.9 KISW. Good morning and happy Tuesday, Rockaholics. Another moist commute for many of us. Yes. And you asked me, Sarah, how my eye was looking today, and it's it's not, it's not better. And so, so I was just wondering, should we start placing bets on when my ruptured uh, blood vessel is actually going to clear out of my eye? So what are we on, day four Let's see, of Friday's the red eye? Me. Yeah, day four. Day, day four, four of the red eye. Of the demon eye. I mean, I, what do you think? By the end of the week, hopefully? I yeah I, I say if it's, if it's not better by Friday you should probably think about maybe going to see somebody about it I mean I, I would no, what are they gonna do I get, let you know what's going on with it and maybe give you something to help fix it I eye drops that, maybe well, I already have some no but like doctor ones I don't okay maybe I like I already doctor. have some they probably have some that maybe help that well there was some I got I got like Lumify or whatever that's supposed to help enhance the whites of your eyes so I got that. <laughs> This is not the problem. Though. It's not going to like eliminate the red eye because it's enhancing the white. You got to figure out how to get rid of the red in the eye. Well, that's everything I have read on WebMD, guys, and uh, Google you, says that you just got to wait it out. No, th- yeah, if you read WebMD, that means you have cancer and syphilis and, chlam- and chlamydia. Mm. It's a trifecta. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, maybe I'll go to the doctor today. I don't think you're gonna. <laughs> how often, when you're talking to somebody? Do you feel like they're just staring at your eye? I mean, at martial arts last night, there were two people that were like, wow, what's up with your eye? Like, just completely You just said Barrett's been working on his spin kick. (laughs) Really good with the roundhouse, straight to the dome. It's crazy. He's so short and he gets up so high. You do not want to mess with my son. Fine, I'll go to the doctor. Don't don't do it for us. Yeah, I will. I do it for you. You want do it for me. You have a red eye as much as you want, Taryn oh, Daly. God. Well, let's inform the rockaholics this morning. Knowledge is power. So give us five-ish minutes, and we'll give you uh, some interesting stuff you can talk about at work. This is the Daily Migs Download, aka the DMD. Here's your daily dose of doings happening in the world. And the DMD is brought to you by Palace Lawn. Today is the day because we care so much about you because you're our friend and we're telling you to go see a doctor about your weird red eye. It's International Day of Friendship. Thanks, friends. That's what we're here for. 
unlike our Seattle Mariners, who are maybe the worst friends ever. They let us down. Okay, they did it. They won three games over the weekend. Yesterday, not so much. Boy, oh boy. I turned on that game. I think it was the third inning, and that's when just everything fell apart. They gave up seven runs in the third and ended up losing 14-7. to seven. It was so bad. At one point, it was like 14, I think, to three. And then they, they bring in a few runs. I'm like, oh, wow. They cut that lead down to half. But half is 14-7. to seven. There's no chance this is going to be a win for them, and that's exactly what happened. But, hey, uh, good news, I guess, Randy Rosarena, the, the new guy that they just got from Tampa, he had a home run. That was pretty cool. Cal Raleigh had a home run. I'm just trying to find the positives. They did make a trade, another trade before the trading deadline, which I believe is today. Justin Turner, they got him from the Toronto Blue Jays. He's, he's a young guy, 39 years old. No, he's 39, but, you know, he brings a lot of veteran leadership. He's also won a World Series, had a couple All-Star selections. He's been playing pretty well recently, so hopefully that helps. And we did, we did have to officially say goodbye to Ty France. He's now off to the Cincinnati Reds. So, farewell, Ty. Well, I did not watch the Mariners game because I was busy watching the Olympics, and Team USA added eight more medals yesterday. No golds, unfortunately. But we did end the day still leading the overall medal count with 20. We are in sixth place in the gold medal count with only three. Lame. We did add a silver and a bronze in skateboarding, <laughs> a silver and a bronze in women's swimming, two bronze medals in men's swimming, a bronze in men's fencing, and the men's gymnastics team took bronze in the team event, which is a huge deal because they had not medaled in that one since 2008. Uh, it's been a minute. We're yes. back. And uh, the women's basketball team continues to just win and dominate. They just crushed Japan by 26 points. Uh, uh, that was out in the first game, and they, they're just going to continue to win. I mean, it's, it's been like just a, a beat down for everybody. I can't remember exactly how many games they've won. It's like 50-something. It's been kind of crazy. Danny, I know you've been having a hard time getting hooked into the world of the Olympics. Well, now I have a reason for you to watch the Olympics because today, U.S. soccer. You should go check it out. They're taking on Guinea, and if they beat them, uh, then they will qualify most likely for the quarterfinals and become the first U.S. men's team to make the knockout rounds of the Summer Games in 24 years. Wow. So now you have a reason to watch the Olympics. All right. Here in Seattle, the U.S. Navy Blue Angels are here for Seafair, and they have practice flights scheduled coming up Thursday at 11 a.m., noon, and 2.20 in the afternoon. Then the main performances will be held on Friday through Sunday over Lake Washington, and this schedule includes various military and rescue demos. If you want to be a spectator, you can watch in person at Genesee Park or live on Kong TV and King 5 Plus on Sunday from 1 until 5. That's the one. Th I love where we work now. I love the building that we work in. I love the studios and all that. But at our old building, every once in a while, while they were doing the Blue Angels, like, trial runs, and they would show up, like, yesterday, how they just kind of, like, fly through the area and... They would fly right by our building where we would see the planes just go, the Blue Angels just right by our, our window on this, before we were on the 16th at the time. Yes. That was freaking cool. The coolest. And super loud. Yes. Hey, as far as weather, we're going to hit a high of 73 degrees. It's going to be cloudy today. That is the DMD, and that's what's up. So yesterday during the Olympics, something awesome happened to the announcer saying this. At one point in your life, I hope everybody in the world gets to experience something like that. A red eye. What was it that actually happened? We'll tell you at 620. The Daily Nig Show. Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With North Sides and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor Taste Combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good.
Hi, and welcome to Ikea. How can I help? Oh, my schedule is crazy. I just want some me time. Maybe it's time to embrace the joy of staying in. With comfortable beds, pillow and decor, mood lighting, and so much more, you can turn your bedroom into the place to be. Oh, sounds like a dream. We've got you. Visit us in-store or at ikea-usa.com slash sleep to create your dream bedroom today. There was a ton of excitement last night at the Paris Olympics with the men's gymnastics team for Team USA. Steven Nederosik, he is the one with the Superman. glasses. Yeah, super he, Clark looks, Kent. he looks exactly like Clark Kent. And apparently his nickname growing up was Spider Monkey, and it shows. He helped his he helped his team medal thanks to his performance on the pommel horse last night and ended up securing bronze, the first for the guys since 2008. And here's how that moment sounded. It's a home run! The drought is over. Team USA, they will be on that medal stand. Olympic medalist, Steven Nederazic, you did your job. Now it's official. The drought is over. There'll be no more questions of when. That time is now. Medalist at the Olympics, the U.S. men. At one point in your life, I hope everybody in the world gets to experience something like that. I'm never going to experience winning an Olympic medal, but thanks for uh, throwing that out there, announcer guy. <laughs> oh, Monday, you all get to go on a pommel horse and win a medal. Watching the watching him on the pommel horse specifically, he makes it look so easy and effortless. I remember when I was a kid watching these things, and I thought, I could do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You see this thing, and it looks really easy. And I'm, like, I'm not like that old, like maybe like 11 or 12. And I remember being somewhere, like some kind of gymnastics place where they had a, pom- a pommel horse. It might have been even at like a, a school gym. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this is the moment. Well, now that your daughter's getting into gymnastics, you could try again. I tried. I went on there. And I'm like, this is a lot harder than I thought. The moment you get on that thing and you realize like how much balance and how much strength you need, this is impossible. I mean, I feel like it's only one step away from some of the moves you were doing in breakdancing with Voltron back let's, in the day. Let's not get crazy, Tyron Daly. There's not a chance in hell. I would break my arm if I even tried to do that thing. Well, afterwards, Or I'd land on my head as well. That, that too. Afterwards, Steven talked about this awesome moment. I had a good feeling that our team was in a great spot. I just knew I had to go up there and do my job right here i was super worried in my routine and i was like let's just get it done let's go for it and right here i was like if i put this dismount up team usa gets a medal i think you can see it right away when i land <laughs> oh dude goosebumps right now man that's the best moment of my life and after listening to him talk they instantly drug tested him for marijuana <laughs> he sounds like such a stoner man I got goosebumps for life, brah. I think he's like a senior at Penn State. He's just kind of a badass. I know he's like all over the internet where he's like he has his eyes closed and he gets in the zone. And he's got his glasses on. And when he's ready, he just takes his glasses off like Clark Kent. <laughs> I mean, think about it. You got to take <laughs> the glasses awesome. off. You're going to get all fogged up with, with glasses on. I'll be honest. I got hooked yesterday because freaking Olympics, they do a great job of like those like personality pieces, like the little story behind all the athletes. And they did a whole thing about all those gymnasts that are part of Team USA and like th- them and their parents and their girlfriends and their everybody. Everybody in their life, and I was just like, man, I want to see these guys do well, and it was awesome to watch. Yeah, go Team USA, and they're so supportive with each other. Like they're just big bro energy, just like high five and hugging, like just feeling it. I get it. They just won a bronze medal. Yeah, it was a huge deal. It was awesome. I've been watching a ton of Olympics. <laughs> yeah, way more than I thought I was gonna. Especially gymnastics. It's not usually my cup of tea, but because of Tatum being so into gymnastics, like it's kind of fun to be able to sit back and not watch. LOL toys on YouTube for a change. I mean, guys, don't watch something else other than that. And it's been gymnastics. There, there's a gal on our, on our team, and I think her name is like Hesley or something like that. Hesley. She has only driven a car two times. That's she's 16 years old. She's only driven a car twice, and she's competing at the Olympics. It is bananas how good these kids are. Did you see? I think it was Team Japan, and the guy was doing that same thing with the pommel horse. Which I mean. And I don't know what happened. They go, and he got real tired. Like, right at the end of his performance. And he's crushing it. He all of a sudden, like, his body just shut down. And he just kind of just fell off the horse or that oh. thing. And it was like, at first I thought that was like he was doing that for, like, an artistic reason. Like, ah, ah, And then, like, just kind of, like, crumbled. <laughs> and then it just, the announcer was like, yeah, we don't know what happened. He just got real tired. And he just stopped, like, his arm stopped working. Just short-circuited a little it bit. It was so weird. What sort of gymnastics would you say has been your favorite so far? Uh, skateboarding. I've been oh, really yeah. into watching the skateboarding as well. I thought Team USA was going to get a gold, and it came so close. But then that dude from Japan is just like a phenom. I like looked up. I don't know any of the moves in skateboarding. Nudo, I think his like name a, was. Yeah, he did a nollie two seventy backside 
flip, whatever, but I I don't know any of the names. No, that, that, that is exactly what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, I know. I can picture it in my head what he was doing. <laughs> the Nolly 270 backflip kick. And yeah. Yes, that's mm-hmm. exactly what it was. Yeah. And every time I watch those guys, my knees just start to ache. Oh, oh yeah. What's the uh, one uh, in gymnastics where it's like the two poles and they got to like kind of like their, their bodies in between the two poles? The bars. <laughs> is that what it is? I don't know. Well, I know like the ladies, it's the uneven bars. I don't know what the men's bars are called. Well, there's, they're two parallel bars. Parallel, maybe they're called the parallel bars. Okay. I that, think we just called if, it. If that's what they're called, we are two of the biggest idiots. We would get a gold medal in being the two biggest idiots. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but watching those, watching people do that just seems like it's on a whole other level of just athleticism. It's like they slam down and catch themselves on their yes. armpits. Oh, yeah, it's the uneven bars or the parallel bars. Look at that. There's there two go. different. What's that thing, you know, with the two bars and it's parallel to each other? That thing's pretty cool. I got goosebumps watching them do that, bro. Oh, man. Well, go Team USA. It's very exciting times. Again, I, I everyone I talk to is all of a sudden very patriotic. It's kind of fun for a couple of weeks where we all get to kind of embrace being Americans and excited oh, to yeah. see people do well. Watched I watched some uh, basketball. I watched uh, water polo. watched some equestrian events. Fencing. What about, oh, fencing's been good. Oh, fun. yeah. I don't know how the scoring works, but it's really exciting to watch. And why do they have the little, why do they have the little, um, like, what do you call it? Like a string attached to their back. What does that do? Well, they're robots, and that's how you turn them <laughs> off so they don't kill anybody. <laughs> when things get a little too intense, because it's very you know, aggressive, you yep. gotta turn them off. So the many of these things, we don't watch no that often. So I'm like, I have a lot of questions. I feel like I'm learning a lot, but I have a lot to learn. About the most random sports that we'll never watch again for another four years. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, what Steven said during his Olympic competition got us thinking. Dude, goosebumps right now, man. This is the best moment of my life. <laughs> 206 803 Rock. We have a very simple question for you, Rockaholics, but we just need for you to call us up now. 206 803 Rock. We'll talk to you and ask that simple question after POD. The Daily Mix Show. Steven Nedarosik helped the U.S. men's gymnastics team medal for the first time since 2008. And this was thanks to his performance on his specialty, which is the pommel horse. Pommel horse. Afterwards, he had this to say while watching his performance. I had a good feeling that our team was in a great spot. I just knew I had to go up there and do my job. Right here, I was super worried in my routine. And I was like, let's just get it done. <laughs> let's go for it. And right here, I was like, I put this dismount up. Team USA gets a medal. I think you can see it right away when I land. <laughs> oh, dude, goosebumps right now, man. This is the best moment of my life. <laughs> I do love he was watching his performance while talking. You could see how giddy he was. And there was that one moment where he dismounts. He kind of does like a one-handed like handstand type of a thing. Like, yep, suck it, everybody. We got a medal. And then just lands. <laughs> so this leads us to ask a simple question. And that simple question is, what was the best moment of your life? That moment that gave you goosebumps. And we're going to start with Chris in Smoky Point. Hi. So, uh, yeah, I uh, for my 30th birthday, I got to race my three-wheeler on the ice at Silvertip Stadium. You did the not. the International Ice Racing Association. That's awesome. Yep. It was on my birthday, and they, they lined us all up on the ice. They had a step forward, and they introduced us one by one. And we were up on the—I was up on the jumbotron, and they were like, "And hailing from so and so, Chris, you know, whatever, riding the 250R ATC." And and they had a step forward and wave, and the whole crowd, the whole place was packed, and uh, everybody just erupted with cheers and everything as soon as you walk forward it i felt like i was on top of the world chris was this during a silver tips game oh uh, no 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 it was uh they had closed off the arena for uh they had the outlaw races uh they had four wheelers they had three wheelers they ran the 70s gotcha. out there it was it was an amazing time because with it the mascot lincoln oh yeah sometimes in between periods he comes flying out on one of those like via, like what like the atvs or whatever yes. and just kind of like just just scoops all around the ice and it's, it's pretty awesome to watch and chris how did you do as far as uh your standings oh oh i i did terribly i had the wrong tires on <laughs> let's go uh, but i had fun though i love that <laughs> 
a friend of mine, he showed up at my house the night before with uh, a case of beer, a box of sheet metal screws, and we just <laughs> filled the tires full of sheet metal screws, and we showed up the next day. So, Oh, oh just God. to weigh down the tires? Uh, no, so we could get a little bit of traction. Oh, that did. Yeah, that makes so sense. We didn't have actual like <laughs> tire picks. So we just used sheet metal screws, and we just screwed them into the tires. And, yeah, we, we ran them like that. And it, it was a super fun time. And they ran us with uh, the ATC 70 class, but those guys have, like, 250cc, like, souped-up motors in those things. And they, they stomped us into the ground. But it, it was a super fun time. That's hilarious. I, mean, I look over, and you're like, wow, these guys are actually very well prepared for this, and we aren't. We are going to fail miserably. Hey, you know what? They made their modifications, and they tried their best. I love that. They're like, let's just get drunk and just modify our tires. <laughs> this should go well tomorrow. Rockaholics, you know what's awesome? You can listen to KISW on the Odyssey app. And when you're logged in and listening, you're going to have a chance to win your share of $100,000. How easy is this? You just create your free account or log into your existing free account and just start streaming on the Odyssey app. You can get more info on the contest at KISW.com. Now, all week long, we've been all about the Olympics and it's even transferred over into Beat Migs. We've got medals to give away to those who can beat you. No, we got medals for me to keep. Oh, really? Yes. That's fighting words, Rockaholics. He's got a record of 208 wins, 60 losses, and 33 ties in 2024. Give us a call now to play Beat Migs, 206-803-ROCK. We'll play the game at 650. The Daily Migs Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Here's why April chose to vaccinate her child. I think actually meeting someone who was not vaccinated and now has a lifelong struggle with a childhood disease really cemented for me that it's super important that we as parents continue to vaccinate our children. Talk to your pediatrician or visit yvaccines.com. Brought to you by Merck. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northsides and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive-thru and do dinner at home. 
nor taste combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. The Daily Mix Show presents the most popular radio game on this side of the speaker. Let's play Beat Mix. Beat Mix. I know Robert from Smoky Point is. Robert, are you there? I am. Robert, if you defeat Migs today, I'm going to send you a Daily Migs gold medal in honor of the Olympics. How does that sound? Oh, it sounds wonderful. I feel like you would look amazing with it on. Are you currently... I won't wear it. I'll, I'll put it up on the wall with all the other trophies. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes, actually, some of the most the important winner. trophies. Yeah. The winner. It almost sounds like you're competing in a swimming race right now. It sounds I know. kind of underwater on the phone. Are you okay? Does it sound weird? A little, a little bubbly. I don't know how else to describe okay, it. Hold on. Let me take you out the speaker. Oh. oh? I don't know how to do that today. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the first challenge but to win the gold medal. Somehow he has medals and better? trophies at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You sound great. Okay. All right, Steve, it's time for you to get out of okay, here. Okay, goodbye. For those playing at home, Robert has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I am. How many rings are in the Olympic symbol? Five. Correct. What band had the 70s hit song Rock Lobster? The B-52s. Yes. In what mountain range is the Matterhorn located? Disneyland. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Pass. Same name as another animal. What is a female elephant called? Uh, pass. What rapper starred in the mid-2000s family comedy Are We Done Yet? Ice Cube. Correct. What city hosted the last Summer Olympics? Beijing. No. Uh, pass. What is the most popular car color in the United States? Yellow. No. Ooh. Red. No. White. Correct. What is the favorite food of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Pizza. Yes. Bismarck is the capital of what U.S. state? Bismarck. Oh, God. Utah? No. Robert, okay. you got... Wow, I did good. Five correct. <laughs> you know what? That's not bad. Right down the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what, Robert? I love the positivity. You know? You got to be positive, man. That's the only way. Oh, I love that. Put okay. a smile on your face and believe. So you think you're going to win this medal? <laughs> I take that as a maybe. Steve, are you ready? Oh, yeah! How many rings are in the Olympic symbol? Five. You know it. Boom. What band had the 70s hit song Rock Lobster? Rock Lobster. Oh, crap. B-52s. Yes. In what mountain range is the Matterhorn located? Oh, that would be Disneyland. <laughs> no. Oh. You and Robert. <laughs> is that what he said? Yes. That's awesome. Uh, what mountain range? Yes. The Rockies? No. I don't know. The Olympics. No. Same name as another animal. What is a female elephant called? A doe. No. A deer. No. A female deer? A doe. A, deer. <laughs> a female, female deer. deer. Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, bear. No. What rapper starred in the mid 2000s family comedy Are We Done Yet? Oh, Ice Cube. You know it. Love that movie. What city hosted the last Summer Olympics? Beijing? No. Uh, um, crap. I don't know. Um, Greece? No. Pass. What is the most popular car color in the United States? It's got to be white. It is. What is the favorite food of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Turtle soup. Pizza. Pizza. No. Pizza. 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 I counted that one. Don't worry. Okay.
Wow. You got five correct. Yeah, and that is a tie. Oh. Five to five. Yeah. No one wins. No oh, medal. Tie goes to a player. <laughs> you have to beat Migs. You did not beat Migs. <laughs> but you know what? In the spirit of the Olympics, because I know they like to hand out medals every once in a while. He's got a wall of trophies. Let's put that on the wall. Yeah, participation trophy. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Send him like a non-gold one. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks, man. A Thanks, bronze. Robert. We'll, we'll color a bronze for you. Wow, that was closer than I thought it was going to be. Oh, man. In what mountain range is the Matterhorn located? I believe it is the Swiss Alps. Yes, you would is. be correct. Yeah. Oh. And it hit me right when you asked it again. Or right when Taryn says no, the answer. No, I, I thought it before she said it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It doesn't Same matter, though. No. name as another animal. What is a female elephant called? Cow. Moo. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought, maybe, I thought maybe we needed to remember what it sounds like. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> did you just go, moo. I did. Yep. So necessary. And, and then you started laughing, and I was like, wait, that's the noise a cow makes, right? That was right. It was right. Um, what city hosted the last Summer Olympics? Moo. Tokyo. Tokyo. Taryn, you would have killed this. Yeah. God. And one you didn't get to, Bismarck, is the capital of what U.S. state? Oh, Montana. No, but I loved the confidence. Is it, is it a that Dakota? So cute. North Dakota? It's North Dakota. Okay. One Moo. of the Dakotas. <laughs> Montana. Well, congratulations on tying. But Robert still gets the medal. Why not? Why not? What has been the strangest thing to ever happen in your neighborhood? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 206803 Rock. We had a black bear in our neighborhood once. That was pretty wild. Oh. We've got two raccoons that like to swing by every morning. We see it on our ring cam. <laughs> and what are they, just causing a ruckus. They just walk by the garage, walk up to these flowers. I believe they're smelling them, and then they just keep on going. Hmm. I it, thought you were going to say there if you had two raccoons that are swingers in your neighborhood. No, and I was dude, like, what? It, it is ring cam after dark. <laughs> What was the strangest thing to ever happen in your neighborhood, Rockaholics? 206-803-ROCK. Something really odd did happen to a neighborhood in Bonnie Lake that is making national news. What happened? News. We're going to tell you after three doors down. The Daily Mix Show. What is the strangest thing to ever happen in your neighborhood? 206-803-ROCK. We're bringing this up because a hot air balloon landed in a random neighborhood in Bonnie Lake last week, and it came within 10 feet of people's homes. Thankfully, no one was hurt. And this was all over the news, not just locally, but nationally. And here are some of the neighbors in Bonnie Lake talking about it. It was huge. I looked up, I'm like, oh, there's a balloon. First, I was like, oh, this is really cool. But then when we realized that it was going down is when I was like, okay, we better see if they need help. On those houses, it was maybe 10 feet above the house. Seeing the small space that they landed in, I was genuinely impressed with how well he could actually control it, given the circumstances. Scary. <laughs> yeah, but Danny, you're no stranger to hot air balloons in New Mexico. They're just everywhere. It's really funny to listen to this, like, uh, you know, being outside of New Mexico and being like, hearing how like surprised people are and like, oh my God, it's so scary. And it's like, it's really not. This happens so often in New Mexico. Like, during the balloon fiesta, like, or even just the entire month of October, balloons land everywhere. Like, like in backyards, on the street, and it's kind of just like... like Danny, that's New Mexico here. That never... If, someone, if a hot air balloon landed in my backyard, I'd be like, what the F is going on right now? <laughs> I want to take you guys so bad to New Mexico in October just because... I would be down. They come... They, I mean, you, when you go to the balloon fiesta, you're within a couple of feet of... 800 balloons crazy and like you heard that whole like <sighs> it's the fire it's such a cool experience 206 803 rock what is the strangest thing to ever happen in your neighborhood kennedy in bothell hi guys what's up so, kennedy uh, i grew up in uh, around bothell and i was probably about eight years old it was in the 80s and i was standing out in the front yard playing by myself and all of a sudden, the septic tank took a sharp turn, and it tipped over into the neighbor's yard. Oh, God. And I have a very strong feeling that the septic tank wasn't empty. No. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. 
I know. And then I was, you know, my mom heard a bunch of ruckus and she came running out, you know, seeing what happened. And she's like, what's going on? I'm like, the poop truck tipped over. (laughs) How long did it take them to clean that up? You know, I don't re- the thing that I remember the most was like the neighborhood dogs like walking oh. through it and oh, people man. trying to get the dogs out. I know. And so but till this day those people in that house have the most amazing garden. <laughs> it was super fertilized. Lush. Humongous humongous plants. Yeah, oh, that is so awesome. I'm looking at a text message at 206 803 Rock. I grew up in Everett, so the weirdest thing that happened in my neighborhood, it's a long list, but one time my dad drunkenly fought police with a samurai sword in my front yard and survived. Oh. <laughs> wow. I wish that was at a time that people could have taken cell phone videos. Where's the ring cam for that? Right. 206-803-ROCK. What is the strangest thing to ever happen in your neighborhood? Barry in Snohomish, what was it for your neighborhood? Well, my neighborhood was just down the street from where that Bonnie Lake incident happened. I lived on Lake Taps, and the cove I was in is called Snag Island Cove. And my neighbor across the way built himself a seaplane, and he was practicing touch and goes, which is basically landing on the water and taking back off. And this is going on for about an hour, and I'm thinking, I should jump on my jet ski and ask him for a ride around the lake. And no kidding, within an hour, he crashed that plane right behind my house. Oh, was he okay? No. Oh, I, no. They, they had to stabilize him to get him in the helicopter to airlift him to Harborview Hospital. And he was there for months recovering. And he, he eventually recovered. And I ran into him years later. And he said, uh, his wife says, can you believe he built another plane and he's still flying? Oh, my God. Barry, I bet you were, did you ever tell him, like, hey, man, that time that you crashed, I was going to try and hit you up to get in the plane with you. Like, how how crazy oh, is yeah. that? Years that- later when I ran into him, I go, I was sitting on my Adirondack chair, about ready to jump in my jet ski and race him down, and he just laughed. He goes, yeah, it's a good thing you did. Yeah. That would mess with my head for a while. No kidding. Like, I'm never going to ask my neighbors to do anything. Oh, yeah. Very scary times. Oh, somebody did say, look, you know, the hot air balloons, they always land in random places in Bonnie Lake. I don't know why this was such a big deal. One landed in the Fred Meyer parking lot, and everyone there had to help raise it back up. Oh, yeah. I did not realize that, that it, there was... Well, I remember when we were at Pain in the Grass a few years ago, we were hanging out in the beer garden. Remember, there was a bunch of hot air balloons that were landing near nearby the uh, White River Amphitheater. Yeah. Have you been in a hot air balloon before? No. Me either. kind of want to. Danny, have you? I have. We, uh, on my old show, we broadcasted our whole morning show from a hot air balloon one morning. Oh, that feels awkward. That's goals. It, that was, is it goals. was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. It was like one of those, like, because they have, like, the, take big, calls? the big gondola. No. Or did you have to yell at other people in hot air balloons to t- do topics? Like, hey, what's exactly. the thing you are for <laughs> This is the coolest experience ever. 206-803-ROCK. David and Lake Stevens, what was the craziest thing to happen in your neighborhood? All right, so my... I grew up in California, out in the middle of nowhere on a ranch, and my parents built a house for my sister out there also. Um, and so there were some fires earlier this summer. Well, one of the helicopters that was going to dump water on one of the fires had some transmission problems and ended up doing an emergency landing in her front yard. Oh, wow. man. <laughs> yeah, they come home, and there's just a, a helicopter sitting there. How long was it parked there after the emergency landing? I think they got it out of there later that afternoon. It took them a couple hours to get rid of it. That is just insane. I bet the kids love that, though. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, all of a sudden, you got this, like, helicopter there for, like, the kids to check out. That'd be pretty cool. Although, it'd be a bitch on the lawn, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. Today is day two of the Dumb Olympics. This is our battle on the Daily Mig Show against the men's room at Family Fun Center in Tequila. So, yesterday, we earned the gold medal in the go-karts. Mm-hmm. But it was not without a bit of controversy. For miles. I, I beat their ass. No. Completely beat their ass. I think that I was... No, no, no. There's no, there's no disputing this. I came in first. <laughs> so suck it. Suck it. <laughs> suck it. So today, we're going to be hitting the batting cages. Find out who will win, us or the men's room, in the Dumb Olympics at 720. Yes. The Daily Mix Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. 
Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northside's and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor taste combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. The excitement is remarkable. The sweat is extra musky. And they're trying real hard. From Tukwila, Washington. This is the first ever Summer Dumb Olympics, featuring the men's room versus the Daily Mig Show. All this week, we are taking on the men's room in our very own version of the Olympics, which we have named the Dumb Olympics. And every day at this time, we are featuring a fierce competition in a myriad of different events. We couldn't get the company to budget us to go to Paris. But we were able to get a couple of hours to head on over to lovely Tukwila, Washington, to the Family Fun Center. So today's challenge is the batting cage. And we wanted to do, to check in with the men's room and us about today's Dumb Olympic event. All right, today's competition is the batting cage. Whoever can get the most hits, I'm here with who I think is the odds-on favorite, D. Ted Smith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you feeling about this? Uh, slow baseball. I feel confident. Yeah. I should be able to hit this. All right, so I think you're coming in first. Who are you feeling about? Who's second? I thought Danny, but he just informed me he's never been to a batting cage in his life. Oh, so just uh, yeah, we were doing the slow pitch. We were doing hard balls, not soft balls, but it was the slow pitch. Like forty miles an hour, I think. Uh, maybe yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not so, putting my money on Danny at all. So, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll go with Sarah. Okay. I was thinking miles. Oh, obviously your team. Oh, okay. Yeah, miles can hit a baseball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go with Steve Mays. Yeah. If he is better at hitting than he is at pitching, that'll be great news. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys saw when we did the uh, Everett Aquasox first pitches. Mine went straight over home plate, and Steve's went into the it's dirt. A big lie. That's all artificial intelligence. You created a false narrative. <laughs> Who are we thinking? I feel like Ted's winning this or Miles. I would say Ted or Miles. Without a freaking Miles, game. how you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, I just want to know if we do pop a shot. Are you um, doing what you normally? Are you, are you doing what you normally do? I, I brought this up because first. like this is not fair. Like it's kind of no. It's it's um, it's a zone. Okay, hold on. So I have to make this clear. Please. Like 20 years ago, not even like maybe less than 20 years ago, the men's room we all went for a bachelor party to Portland, and it was their bachelor parties, like collective bachelor parties, and we all got messed up. And this is going to be an ongoing theme throughout the entire Dumb Olympics because Miles will continue to bring it up. I might have uh, might have had partook in a little um, ecstasy. <laughs> And then we went to, like, this Portland Hall of Fame museum while we were rolling. And I found a papa shot. And for that day and that day only, I could not miss if I even tried. I was hitting so many baskets that people that were there, kids. I mean, it was we're in the middle of the day. And there were people surrounding me, watching me as I just never missed. The, the machine kept going, bling, bling, bling. And people were just losing their minds. And so, so for the rest of my life, Miles... 
especially Miles, but Thrill as well, will forever make fun of me for that. Oh, boy. It was one of my greatest moments. <laughs> it's a zone uh, that Steve gets in. Yes. And then, and then then we're all screwed. I've seen this in Portland. Yes. It was a bachelor party. And then, then I watched you walk into a fountain. Yeah. I did. At 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, did. I did. So, I mean, I think this is all. We have to well, find a fountain. There's a fountain right there. Oh, no. And in all fairness, I was chasing birds. <laughs> Okay. The story gets better. I love it. And dumber. Well, how did we do in the batting cages? Let's find out. All right, we got Ted. He's kicking things off in the Dumb Olympics with the baseball competition. Wow. 17 for 17. Ted, you just hit every single ball. How you feeling? <laughs> Tired gas. <laughs> All right, so, so that was the one thing. We didn't realize how many balls that thing would throw. We thought we'd go with like 10. It kept going like after 20. And Ted didn't. Ted hit every single pitch thrown at him. Could not miss. Unstoppable. All right, so, so so we went from uh, D. Ted Smith, who did not miss a single pitch, hit every single one, and so far Danny has not hit a single ball. I guess it's harder than it looks. <laughs> I mean, I would know. I hit him. Oh, Ted with the confidence. <laughs> yeah. You know, what? I don't know about baseball, guys. <laughs> hey, you were going to go-kart. Yeah, I was. All right. One out of two ain't bad. <laughs> Thrill, any advice for Danny right now who has not hit a single ball? No, he's going to make me look better than I am. <laughs> I am so glad this is happening. That was the one thing everybody felt relieved after you went second because we were like, well, he went zero for 20 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So we all felt good. You know, I was just there to make you guys feel better about yourself. I could have hit every ball if I wanted to. But, you know, I don't want to show off after Ted, like, really did it. Just like me. I didn't want to pitch that, throw that pitch over the mound. I wanted to make that little six-year-old feel better by hitting the dirt as well. Yeah. Yeah. How many balls do you think you're going to hit, Sarah? Dude, I better, I better hit more than you, Danny, or I'm going to be very disappointed in myself. All right, Mike Hawk here with Steve the Thrill Hill. He's about, he's on deck and ready to go up for bat. Thrill, how are you feeling out here, man? Uh, better than them. <laughs> better than them. It's just nonstop. <laughs> better than That's them. my position right now. How are you feeling after that one there, Steve? Oh, right. I think I hit, what, seven? Dude, that is so exhausting. Man, that sucks. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about Team Men's Room overall? I think right. Hey, <laughs> shut up, Sarah. Sarah, how's Steve doing? You know, not great. <laughs> better than you, but that's not hard to do. Oh! Taryn, how's he doing? So far, he's the MVP of the Daily Mig show, but that's just because he followed your performance. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mig's currently sitting here at 16, I'm going to say. Yeah, I came on strong towards the end. Once I realized, I, I channeled all the coaches back when I was a kid that I never listened to. And I'm like, Steve, put your eye on the ball. And it actually worked. It was crazy. They were right all these years later. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say. At least. <laughs> yeah. All right, Steve, you're fresh yeah. out the box. How are you feeling out there? Uh, you know what? I hit the ball more than once. How do you feel about the rest of your competition? You still got Sarah to come up. You still got Taryn to come up. How do you feel with the rest of your team? You know, I'm glad that one of us got a hit. <laughs> now the pressure's on our friend Sarah over here. I think she'll get one. Hey! Boom. Oh. <laughs> How good did that feel? So good. Just to even hit a ball, but then also beat Danny. It's mm -hmm. like such a good victory. <laughs> Better than Danny, she just yelled. Taryn, after watching all of this happen today, you're up next. Are you Are you ready? Well, I just want to be better than you, Danny. I mean, everyone's going to be better than me at this point. Hit. Just get one hit. Tyron Daly is about to do it. Oh, oh do you hit one? That's one more. One more than <laughs> <laughs> She shushed us. I don't know. Well, you know, she is kind of a bitch. Spicy. Everybody was getting spicy. Day two of the Dumb Olympics got a little bit more spicy. So now let's check in with Sarah with the medal count thus far in the Dumb Olympics. Okay, so batting cages. Very obvious. Ted got gold. Oh, he's unstoppable. Yes. For silver, Mr. Mike Hawk. And for bronze, our very own Steve Miggs. Thank you. On the podium. I got a medal. So, yeah. the total is we are tied. We Men's room, daily Miggs. Both one gold, both one bronze, both one silver. Wait, what wow. did I get? <laughs> oh, Danny, you're not, you're, you're not even on the sheet of paper. We got you one you, of those little, uh, little rubber balloon thingies that you get if you, <laughs> at, the, at the little game the little center game thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you'd like to watch the corresponding video that we have, it is up on our Daily Mig social media pages. Daily is spelled without an I. And then this afternoon, you can listen to the men's room for their recap at 520. Now, after we were done, Danny, you went back out into the cage to try to get a hit. And how did that go? I mean, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Good job.
Now, two former Arby's employees are facing charges after being caught stealing thousands of dollars worth of roast beef from a restaurant. Thousands of dollars of meat. So because of this, our friend Sarah got a little drunk over the weekend and wanted to chat with other drunk people about the things that they have stolen from work. How did that go? Let's just say we're not talking about things like envelopes, paper clips, rubber bands. Nope. We're going to find out after Red Hot Chili Peppers. The Daily Mix Show. Two former Arby's employees are facing charges after they were caught stealing thousands of dollars worth of roast beef from the restaurant. And they snuck it out of the restaurant by hiding it in trash bags. What are they planning on doing? I guess uh, selling on the roast beef black market? Yeah, no. Oh, no yeah, idea. My bad. They're starting up their own Arby's. Take it home and freeze it. No clue. But because of this, we wanted to find out what our, you know, drunk friend, Sarah, <laughs> could ask people about stealing at work. What things have they stolen from their job? She gets drunk and hits the streets. Oh. And she's got questions for other drunk beats. It's drunk Sarah asking drunk people questions. It's drunk Sarah asking drunk people Sarah, where did you go this weekend? I just want to say, it's about time I have a song. <laughs> that was lovely. Where did I go, Taryn? You know, that's a great question. <laughs> I I went out with the ladies Friday night, and we went to a concert. So we were... Was that Chris Brown? It was Sea Breezy. Uh, yes. With Sea Breezy? Were you having hot dogs? So you got Sea Breezy with the glizzy? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I mean, I wish. Uh, so we first went to Altitude, which is like a rooftop bar. That's Ooh. where the night kind of got started. It was beautiful. We could tell everyone was there for the concert. And then, you know, after the concert, we hit up a few other places. And I remember going to the Queen Anne Beer Hall. Go Cougs. It's Coug owned. I didn't even know that. <laughs> but yeah, I met some great people, including I call them now my best friends in the bathroom. All right, well, let's check out how drunk Sarah does when she asks drunk people questions. Oh, it's Sarah here with the Daily Mig Show. And I'm with... Lucy? Okay, Lucy, I have a question for you. Uh When have you stolen something from your work? Uh, Does somebody else's money count? No! Whoa! Lucy! Uh, Yeah, it was uh, tough times, man, tough times. Wait, wh- how like how much money? Like, <laughs> she only had six dollars in her wallet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was expecting a lot more than that. So was I. Although to be honest, I feel like that's even more douchey. If you only have six dollars, you might need those six dollars. Where if you had like hundreds upon hundreds, then and... you're just rolling in the dough. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So it wasn't like hundreds of dollars or something. No, um, but she still noticed. Wait, so you literally like stole this girl's wallet, stole the money out of it, and then put the wallet back? The the wallet was out on the shelf, open to anybody who walked by. What'd you do with that six dollars? <laughs> she noticed, like I said, so they might have looked at the security cameras. <gasps> Imagine getting busted for trying to steal six dollars. Oh, was it worth it? That's like that's like next level loser, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got caught? Oh yeah, big time. Uh, Did you get fired? Yes. <laughs> Politely told not to come back to work <laughs> again. <laughs> Hi Ashley. Okay, I have a question for you. All right. When have you stolen something from your job, and what was it? Mm, well, I did used to work in retail, and back in the day, it was pretty easy to mark stuff as clearance when it kind of really wasn't. So I guess you could say I halfway stole that stuff as far as their profits that they should have made off of those things. I love how people rationalize what they've stolen. Like I only halfway <laughs> stole some stuff. I didn't fully steal it. I mean, it's kind of smart. Ooh, so you got, like, good clothes for cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Real cheap. Ooh, okay. I like that, actually. Yeah. She loves the bad boys. Before she met George, she was dating the prisoners. And now, also, I... you're just a fan of the ladies that are also the bad girls. Yeah. I know. All right, but now these are your two new best friends? Yeah! All right. Okay, Haley and Sharon, I just want to know, have you guys ever stolen anything from your workplace? <laughs> Um, I have stolen maybe several things from my workplace. You have? I have, I have, I have. What have you stolen? Um, okay, 
the most ridiculous thing I stole. I don't work there anymore, so obviously. It's fine. I'm, I'm yeah. 30 years old. I swear I don't work at a pet store, but I did steal a... What's wrong with working at a pet store? Right? People love pets no matter how old they are. That's true. Steal a hamster. You stole a hamster? I fully stole a hamster. Oh, I my God. Stole a did they find out? Um, okay, no, but my friend went back in and stole the cage, and they actually caught her, and she literally got arrested. But we were, like, 15. Okay. Wait, but they never found out that you stole the hamster? They never found out that I stole the hamster, but she fully went back for the cage. And she did get caught with the cage. Honestly, that's a good friend. <laughs> that's good. That's the, Are you still friends with her? Um, yes. What'd you steal? Well, yeah, that's a no on International <laughs> Friend Day. What'd you steal? Well, I think mean, this is pretty bad. This is we're talking about the worst thing that we've ever stole. In which case, I would say it's because it was my boss's virginity. <gasps> <gasps> Wasn't expecting wow. that. Stole it. Took it. <laughs> Kept it. Never Forever. got it back. You what? should lose her. <laughs> Step up your game, Sarah. Okay. Time to take some virginities. You know, if you had a bunch of money in your pocket, you wouldn't have to steal anything from your work. So download the Odyssey app, log in, and listen to KISW for your chance to win your share of $100,000. Get all the contest info at KISW.com. All week long, we have gold medals up for grabs to those who are smart enough to beat Migs. He's currently 208 wins, 60 losses, and 34 ties in 2024. 206-803-ROCK. We'll play Beat Migs at 750. The Daily Migs Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Christy Pierce Rampone here, former member of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team, three-time gold medalist, two-time World Cup champion, and part of the 99 team that won the Women's World Cup igniting passion for soccer everywhere. I'm mom to two teenage girls, and quality time together is prime time. We love to cook, and I have an obsession, a healthy one, of course, with cooking utensils. Where do I turn? Amazon Prime to get them fast. And when they arrive, where do I turn? To Prime to stream the best cooking shows. And then for dessert, what do we do? The Rampone Team streams. Each of us gets to be the captain and pick the show. Right now, we're all over British TV, part of a Prime subscription. I think a trip to the UK is in the future. And of course, we'll get all we need for that trip. From workout clothes to raincoats, from plaids to luggage, from travel guides to umbrellas, from streaming to shopping, it's on Prime. Visit Amazon.com slash Prime to get more out of whatever you're into. That's Amazon.com slash Prime. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. 
Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northsides and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor Taste Combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. Christy Pierce Rampone here, former member of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team and three-time gold medalist, two-time World Cup champion, and part of the 99 team that won the Women's World Cup, igniting passion for soccer everywhere. And like Amazon Prime, I'm a lot of things beyond what I'm best known for. I'm a girl mom to two teenagers, a dog mom too, an entrepreneur, a TV commentator, and I use my Prime membership pretty much every day for so many things. I am known for being quick and crafty on the soccer field, and I am definitely crafty at home, especially digging in with the girls' school projects. And I rely on Amazon Prime to have what we need and get it to us with the speed I am used to. With every change of season, I love to decorate our home. And where do I get ideas and the goods? Prime, of course. Not to mention with all the great streaming options, it's a total gold medal experience. From streaming to shopping, it's on Prime. Visit Amazon.com slash Prime to get more out of whatever you're into. That's Amazon.com slash Prime. The Daily Mix Show presents the most popular radio game on this side of the speaker. Let's play Beat Mix. Beat Mix. Don't be a loser. Beat Migs. I know Christine from Spanaway is. Christine, are you there? Yes, I am. Christine, if you beat Steve today, I'm going to send you a beautiful gold medal in honor of the Olympics. How would you like to earn one of those? I would love to earn one of those. And I would love to give you one. All right, Steve, it's time for you to get out of here. Bye bye. For those playing at home, Christine has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes. What band had the 90s hit song, What I Got? Sublime? Yes. The highest mountain in the U.S. is located in what state? Washington. No. Colorado. No. New York. No. What kind of dance is a new addition to the Olympics this year? Pass. What actor was recently announced that he will be playing Dr. Doom? Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, his name, uh, his name just left me. Pass right now. What white condiment is typically on a Seattle dog? Mayonnaise? No. Ranch? No. Mm. Uh, uh, Slaw. No, Lady Gaga derived her stage name from a song performed by which band? Uh, Queen. Correct. Kingfisher and Swift are both types of what animal? Kingfisher. Pass. What is the process by which plants make their own food? Photosynthesis. Yes, Christine. I'm giving you that, which means you got three correct. <laughs> I knew I was going to do bad. <laughs> you know what? Your accent just makes everything better. I know. Though. She's the winner in my book. Oh, and I love that she said slaw for the dog. Just a little uh, slaw. Yeah, sorry, y'all. <laughs> no, I love it. Christine, where's your accent from? Uh, Alabama. Oh, I love it. Alabama. Yes. <laughs> Steve, are you ready? Oh, yeah. What band had the 90s hit song, What I Got? 
Oh, Sublime. You know it. Love the it. highest mountain in the U.S. is located in what state? Colorado. No. Alaska. Correct. Woo. What kind of dance is the new addition to the Olympics this year? Oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. Break him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. What actor was recently announced that he will be playing Dr. Doom? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Correct. What white condiment is typically on a Seattle dog? Cream cheese. Yes. Lady Gaga derived her stage name from a song performed by which band? The Ramones. No. Oh. Um. <laughs> Lady. Oh, 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 oh. Queen. Correct. Kingfisher and Swift are both types of what animal? Fish. No. What? Kingfisher and Swift. Uh, Taylors. No. (laughs) What is the process by which plants make their own food? Oh, um, oh crap. Uh, Photosynthesis? Correct. The first Starbucks opened in what decade? 70s. Correct. What is the capital of Ohio? Ah, Cincinnati. No. Steve, it doesn't matter though because you got eight correct, which is a win. (laughs) Eight to three. Sorry, Christine. Have a good one, Christine. All right. Thank you. Oh, so polite. I'm the best. I know. I'm the best. That southern charm. Uh, Kingfisher and Swift are both types of birds. Yes. And what is the capital of Ohio? What's the Columbus. 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 That's yeah. I, I couldn't think of that one college town. Good yep. job, Danny. Six. Well, congratulations, Steve. You crushed it. Hell yeah! No medal for her. Nope. We are so excited about this, Rockaholics. We now have a Daily Migs t-shirt in the rock shop at KISW.com. If you grew up loving Beavis and Butthead, this is absolutely the shirt for you. So I am the great Cornholio. It's I so need great. I for my bumhole. <laughs> <laughs> we got to give big thanks to artist Justin Hunt for, made the, for the making the amazing design that is on the t-shirts. And you can get one while supplies last at KISW.com. Fire. 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 <laughs> Steve Miggs, has your car ever been keyed? No. Never, How about ever. you? I had my, my POS car in high school got keyed by some mean girls. I feel like Sarah's probably gotten their car keyed. That's so rude. I would be doing the keying, okay? <laughs> but I have it. But I have it. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. Danny, have you? Nope. No. Okay, but what about this? Have you ever had your car turkeyed? I don't even know what the hell that means. Well, I'm going to tell you what it means after the Scorpions. The Daily Miggs Show. There is a bizarre story out of Boston involving a turkey out in the wild. In Boston? In Boston. Okay. I did not know that there were a lot of turkeys in Boston, but apparently there's at least one. And a woman named Alicia came back to her car and saw that this turkey was scratching it all up. And here she is talking about what happened. All sides of my car were messed up, like completely scratched. We were already a little out of it. Saw the note, was like, oh gosh, someone hit my car. It says, I just watched and recorded a massive turkey attack your car for over 15 minutes. Sorry you were the target of this turkey rage. So she didn't see it. She just came back and saw her car all damaged and was like, who the F did this? And then some woman's like, I filmed the turkey. And then I think she posted, the woman who filmed it posted it on TikTok, and then that went viral. That's crazy. So they say that turkeys get a little bit attracted to things like <laughs> things that are glittery or reflective. So they think maybe this turkey saw its reflection in the car door and just started going to town. Well, I know the feeling. There are some mornings I look in the mirror and I'm like, I just want to punch that person. I realize, oh, oh it's me. Be wow. kind to yourself. looks so stupid and ugly. Be Let me take. Kind. In the mornings, there's no kindness. I'm tired and I'm angry. <laughs> And I see this ugly looking bald guy looking at me. Oh my God. Have you ever encountered turkeys in the wild? No, roosters. Oh, like in Hawaii. In Hawaii. And that's always weird because I'm just like, am I, I don't know how angry these things get. And like, you know, I always mean to like check, but like you're just so close to them and you're eating and they're just like right up on you. I'm like, is this thing going to snap on me? I don't know if I could take a rooster. One of the times we were in Leavenworth recently, I, I kept hearing the sound and I couldn't see anything. It was like a little bit dark and I, I'm looking around and I don't see anything on the ground. And then I realized there's like a flock of wild turkeys up in the trees. Oh, yeah. And I didn't even realize they could fly that far. I thought just because they're like kind of big, big birds, I didn't realize they were such flyers. I think my my man is like going to like a fair. I don't know. I don't even know if I've ever seen a turkey. And at the fair, it's already cooked. It's just a dead giant leg. <laughs> <laughs> delicious. They do, they do look delicious, man. I got to tell you. And also savage. So if the woman came back with one of those turkey legs, I think that turkey would never touch her car again. Absolutely. Tell, go tell the others. 
Yesterday, Team USA almost got the gold in skateboarding. You were watching it, right, Migs? I was, man. Then uh, the, the guy from Japan ended up winning it. Some are still annoyed, though, that skateboarding is even an Olympic sport. Oh. So we're going to go straight to the comments at 820. The Daily Migs Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northsides and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor Taste Combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. I do it while making coffee. I do it in the car. I do it when the kids are asleep. What are they all doing? Using Dermaclara's 100% medical grade silicone patches to fight fine lines and wrinkles. These clever patches are safe and natural and so incredibly effective that you can start seeing results in just 20 minutes per use. Jessica from New York did it while reading her favorite book and saw her fine lines fading in just a week. Megan from California did it while catching up on her favorite show and watched her stretch marks disappear within a month. Dermaclara patches enhance your skin's natural healing process with just one ingredient, 100% medical grade silicone. They're reusable, easy to use, and deliver visible improvements in 30 days. At Dermaclara, we prioritize safety without compromising results, which is perfect for every stage of your skincare journey. So what are you waiting for? Join the countless others who do it anytime, anywhere, and transform your skin. Visit Dermaclara.com today and say goodbye to wrinkles and hello to beautiful, radiant skin. Everyone knows social media is a time suck. And what you're about to hear proves it. If it's online, someone, somewhere, has an opinion and is whining about it. So let's get straight to the comments. Yesterday during the Olympics, Team USA's Jagger Eaton and Nyjah Huston momentarily believed that they had secured a gold medal in the men's street skateboarding final. Yes. However, Japan's Yuto Horigami executed a crazy trick at the end of his run, and then he clinched the gold medal for the second consecutive Olympics. Damn you, Yuto. Apparently, he's a stud. Totally. So many are very excited about it being an Olympic sport, while others are not so stoked on skateboarding being included. So, of course, we have to go straight to the comments. We found a few posts. And mind you, skateboarding now, this is the second time it's been an Olympic sport. So it was an Olympic sport about four years ago as well. We sent these posts to our production director, Jason, a.k.a. Veggie Dog, a.k.a. VD, and said, hey, pick out some of your favorite just to point out how ridiculous some people get over sometimes the dumbest stuff. And he did just that. And he reenacted them however he'd like. So are you ready for the first comment about skateboarding being an Olympic sport? Let's do it. I'm sorry, but skateboarding is not an Olympic sport. It's what 12 to 16-year-old hooligans do to scare unsuspecting workers on their way in and out of buildings at, say, Fifth and Marion. Mm. That seemed oddly specific, Jason. <laughs> I mean, you can really, like, you can nitpick any Olympic sport, minus, like, the obvious ones, but, like, there are certain sports where I'm like, how is that a sport? But it is. Even watching table tennis this week. And then I looked it up. It's been a sport since 1988. And then you watch table tennis. You're like, there's nobody that, like, a casual table tennis player would not be able to even last a second with one of those athletes. Oh, no. they're, they're insane. When skipping rocks gonna be an Olympic sport? Asking for a friend. Quick question. How many of these complainers have ever tried skateboarding before? <laughs> right? It's literally so it's hard. very difficult. And how many people have tried skipping rocks before? I have. It's hard. It 
is. Right. Good at it. I would I would watch that as an Olympic sport. I could get like seven in a row. Bull what? Crap. Maybe. <laughs> I got maybe two or three in me. She does live kind of like in the middle of nowhere, so I wouldn't be surprised if she just does that. For the second annual Dumb Olympics, whenever we do that, I guess skipping rocks will be a sport for us. We're going to the lake. All right, time to practice. Here's another comment about skateboarding, not skipping rocks, being an Olympic sport. Good God, man, between skateboarding and breaking, stoned 16-year-old me would have been so happy to see these as Olympic sports. But I am 45 now, and I think this is dumb. (laughs) Because I'm what, you know, I would like to call an adult. I do like this part. Dumb. (laughs) It's like a male version of Sarah right there. (laughs) Dumb. Why is there a B on the end? No one knows. Dumb. That's why. <laughs> Dude, such bullshit, right? How do you not have Tony Hawk in the Olympics for fuck's sake? That's like having gymnastics without Simone Biles. Isn't Tony Hawk like 60 years old, you stupid, ignorant, out of touch person? <laughs> It would have been cool, though, to see Tony Hawk, just see how. <laughs> I mean, I bet he could still hold his own, but some of those, like, oh, oh, yeah, youths he, are so good. He'd be smoked by that, but it'd be cool to see him just out there. They should have just played Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, soundtrack during oh, the competition. Bro, that would have been amazing. Yeah. That, that would be total nostalgia right there. Is he not there? Like, I know, like, they bring past Olympians. I know he wasn't a past Olympian, but they have, like, flag bearers, you know? Like, I would my, think. Yeah, buddy, my Jeff, he's like, he was from Guam and he he was an Olympic wrestler and he was one of the flag bearers because he's no longer an Olympic wrestler, but it was kind of cool to see him out there. Yeah. I think Tony Hawk could have been out there on like a skateboard doing yeah. something. I don't know. Now I'm starting to sound like the guy complaining. <laughs> <laughs> so next comment. How f***ing dumb that this is an Olympic sport. What a f- up world we live in where skateboarders are sharing the same stage as world class athletes. I like watching the men who swim in their speedos. <laughs> oh my god. That was oh. dumb. Oh. Here we got one more comment. I don't know. Do we want it? Yeah. yeah. Alright, let's go. The Olympics are done, and this has just made it dumber. Hashtag truth bomb. Yeah, typically when you say something's a truth bomb, typically it's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, go Team USA. The one and only time I tried skateboarding, it flew out from underneath me, and I landed on my tailbone, and that tailbone injury stuck with me for months. So you never skateboarded again? Hell no. Wow. I mean, I tried snowboarding and was also equally bad at that. Danny, I know you've skateboarded. Yes. Have you ever done the ones where, you like, like the skate parks with, like, when they have, like, the... I, it, it, it almost is like the abandoned pool, but like they've done them now, like you know, where it's a little bit more up to code or whatever. Oh, but like, sure. Have you have you done those? Not on a skateboard. I used to try to do skate parks on a skateboard. I would fall all the time. I I was more of just the flat surface, you, you know, an urban skateboard. Yeah, I did. The, I did it on my uh, roller blades, though. Really? Oh yeah. Like go down. Oh yeah. yeah. Get in. Yeah. Wow. I couldn't do it anymore. But what? I I've tried to do the the ramps and all the the bowls and all that kind of stuff. Back I'd be in the scared day. to sit on a skateboard and go down some of those things. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just that that looks just crazy. It is very scary. I I used to try to be a poser skateboarder and I did the is whole that because of Avril Lavigne. Well, yeah, because I was dating someone. Oh, I was trying to impress him. You know what I think that is. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> KISW presents the Halloween Hullabaloo on October 13th, and it's happening at the Showware Center in Kent. We've got Godsmack coming to town. We have Hailstorm on the bill, and those tickets are on sale now at KISW.com. Steve Miggs, I know over the years you have interviewed a ton of celebrities, a ton of rock stars. Have you ever asked one a question and they refuse to answer it because it's so stupid? No, and I have definitely prefaced many questions with, hey, I know this is a stupid question. But usually when I say that, they're a little bit more on guard. And when I ask it, they're like, oh, that wasn't as dumb as I thought. It was was dumb, but not as dumb as I thought. Well, one of the most iconic actors of all time just snapped back at a reporter and shot down the old saying, there are no stupid questions. Some would say it was even 
Dumb. And you'll hear what happened during What's Trending after Pearl Jam. The Daily Mix Show. As you're getting your day moving, Rockaholics, we know that sifting through the wild world of pop culture can be a tough one. Mm -hmm. But that is why we are here, and we're going to tell you what's trending. What's trending on the Daily Mix Show. At Comic-Con in San Diego, Harrison Ford was asked a question, and that question compared his new role as Red Hulk to Indiana Jones, and he called that question stupid. Yeah. Here is that moment. Um, who deals better with snakes, Indy or Thaddeus Ross? This is uh, who shot first, Guido right. or Han Solo. I, you know, I've always uh, treated these questions with the utmost respect. And somehow, at the same time, complete disdain. I will not answer that stupid question. But thank you. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, it's, I'm an, it's an honor to know. Delighted that. to have the opportunity. Wow. He played it off like in a, a. He was trying to come off. He was being fun loving, but also you could kind of hear it in his voice. He's like, "Oh, great! Here's another stupid question." He has become a bit of a grumpy old man, and I kind of love it. I was about to say, I'm all for grumpy Harrison Ford because he's still very entertaining, and also he's right. That was a stupid question. Hey, speaking of Comic Con, I, I I know Danny, you've been stuck in an elevator before, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, have you been stuck in an elevator? I was this past weekend for not very long, but how long is not very long? <sighs> Maybe like four minutes. That's still kind of annoying. Oh, it was so annoying, and then yeah. I was like, when when do I really start panicking? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that my, my most of that three or four minutes. What about you, Taryn? Oh, I got stuck in one in Bellevue for almost twenty minutes years ago, what? and I was all by myself, which was almost worse. I didn't have anybody to talk to. Well, how about this Jennifer Garner? She was at Comic Con. First time she's ever gone to Comic Con might be the last, but she was showing up because she was doing like a Deadpool and Wolverine panel, and she also su showed up for a surprise screening over at the San Diego Comic Con. She was in an elevator in the convention center, got stuck in that elevator. For over an hour. Oh. And here she is. Of course, she pulled out her phone and decided to record some stuff talking about it. We're stuck on this elevator. I need, um, <laughs> could use Starting a, with the B1 to I go could use a Wolverine. I could use a Deadpool. Still. I could use we someone. Take the stair we yeah, we're back. looking for stairs. So he's got to reset it to this okay. place and it'll go up. Thanks for having us here. My first Comic-Con. <laughs> oh okay, bye for now. How awesome and awful would it have been if she was like in there with like a cosplaying super fan? Oh no! You know what I mean? For an hour, it would have to either it's going to be a lot of fun or it'd be the worst hour of somebody's life. Like them just constantly asking her questions. I think it would be the worst. Oh. It'd be amazing. I mean, it'd be amazing for the person for sure. I would be like just. Cr I feel like I would just stare like creepily and be like, "Did you know I love you so much?" Like for an hour, and then if I were her, I would have just played dead. I, yeah. I definitely would ask her the question I ask my daughter whenever she's having fun. I'd be like, are we having a good time or a fun time? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the good life or the fun life? No. <laughs> Simone Biles' mom called out Snoop Dogg on live TV for snubbing them back in 2010. This was during an interview at the Olympics opening ceremony where Nellie Biles gave Snoop a hard time about it. And this is what it sounded like. Yeah, we got a few down here. And Snoop, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, Simone and you have known each other for a long time. Right, Nelly? How? That's correct. How, Nelly? How? I mean, I remember, I will never forget Double that we met you in Times Square. Double 2010. And you said, because we asked for a picture, and you said two minutes, one, two, and you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. I do love how when he talks, he still sounds like he's like he's rapping. How? How, Nelly? Like, yeah. he just sounds like he's rapping a Snoop Dogg song. Great delivery. Oh, that's awesome. Full circle moment right there. Hey, speaking of the Olympics, now we all know when you win the Olympics, when you dominate, you get a gold medal. But apparently you get more than just a gold medal. The athletes, they receive a mysterious gold box, but it's not a mystery anymore because people are now talking about it. It, it contains an official poster that was designed by this person by the name of Hugo Gatoni. And here's the crazy part. So you're like, oh, poster, whatever. This poster took four months and 2,000 hours to create. It's got a bunch of, like, Paris landmarks, a bunch of Olympic symbols as well. It's rich in detail. It has a bunch of stories in it, too. So you get that poster as well as a mascot plush toy and some medals with a piece of the Eiffel Tower that's embedded in them as well. And what, was the, what is the mascot for this year's Olympics? Uh, it's Gritty. Gritty. Gritty from the Philadelphia Flyers, oh, yes. <laughs> I like how you're like, Gritty, yes. Gritty, okay. No, but they, have you seen the little mascot? I have oh. not. I don't know what the heck that um, guy is. He looks like a uh, red poop emoji. He does. It says, 
the Olympic Frige, P H Y R G E. Frisian caps. It's a hat. <laughs> Is it? It's a French hat, I guess. Wow, we're all stupid. (laughs) It should be a beret if they were going to go with a French hat. Oh, no, it should be Frylock from Aqua Teen Hunger Force for French fries. There you go. But look at it. It's got its little eyelashes are the French flag. It's kind of cute. Aw. Isn't it? (laughs) But, like, that's what you get if you win a gold medal. I swear, they they had, like, a poop emoji costume, and they're like, just dye it red and put an Olympic logo on it. It's good. Some googly (laughs) eyes. We got it. That'll work. Well, also speaking of the Olympics, we're doing our own Olympic situation for Beat Migs this week, Rockaholics. If you are successful in beating Migs, you're going to get hooked up with a Daily Migs show Olympic gold medal. Migs has a record of 209 wins, 60 losses, and 34 ties in 2024. 206-803-ROCK. We're going to play Beat Migs at 850. The Daily Migs Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. As a Ford owner, there are lots of choices where to get your vehicle serviced. You could choose to go to their place, the local dealership, your place, home, apartment, or condo, your workplace, even your happy place, like your cottage on the lake. Go to your Ford dealer or choose Ford Pickup and Delivery to have your vehicle picked up, serviced, and brought right back. Or choose mobile service where a technician will come to you and do routine maintenance right on the spot. Both are complimentary and depend on your location. That's ownership built around you. Contact your participating dealer or visit FordService.com for important details and limitations. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northsides and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor Taste Combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. Listen as Selenia tells us why she chose to vaccinate her daughter. I definitely felt like the pros far outweighed the cons, the diseases that I am protecting my child against. They're still here. And at the end of the day, it's my job as a mother to keep my child safe. Talk to your child's doctor and learn more at whyvaccines.com. Brought to you by Merck. The 
Daily Mix show presents the most popular radio game on this side of the speaker. Let's play Beat Mix. Beat Mix. Don't be a I know Franco from Issaquah is. Franco, are you there? Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. Franco, if you beat Mr. Miggs today, I'm going to send you the coolest gold medal ever. How does that sound? Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> it does sound outstanding. I love that. I feel like when it, if he beats me and shows up in the mail, he's going to look at it and go, what the hell am I going to do with this thing? <laughs> oh, for sure. He's going to wear it. Every it. Day. Oh, wear yeah. It of course. Pride. Yeah. All right, Steve, it's time for you to get out of here. Bye-bye. For those playing at home, Franco has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes, I am. What does DM stand for in the world of social media? Direct message. Correct. What is the highest mountain uh, mountain above sea level? Mount Everest. Correct. What pop band had the hit songs Meet Virginia and Drops of Jupiter? Train, Matchbox Train, 20. Train, yes. Um, yes, the Olympics were first held to honor which Greek god? Uh... The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in what U.S. state? Ohio. Correct. Which car manufacturer uses the slogan, The Power of Dreams? Fast. What late actress played Grandma Annie in the romantic comedy, The Proposal? Fast. What is the largest living bird? Ostrich. Correct. The first Cheesecake Factory restaurant opened in California in what decade? 60s, 70s, 80s. 70s, yes. How many total stars are on the Chinese flag? One. No. Three. Five. It is five, but I think it was a little late. But Franco, you got six correct. A little better than half because you got to all ten questions. I think it's going to be close. I do too. Do you think Franco's got it? I believe in Franco. Do you think he's going to get that medal? I want him to. I kind of think Steve's got this one. Hell yeah. Steve, are you ready? Let's go! Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah. What does DM stand for in the world of social media? <laughs> uh, direct message. Yes. What is the that highest mountain message, above people. sea level? Yeah, no thank you. What was that? What is the highest mountain above sea level? 3,000? Oh, wait. Highest mountain. Mount Everest. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> what pop band had the hit songs oh, Meet Virginia right. and Drops of Jupiter? Oh, Train. Correct. Yeah. The Olympics were first held to honor which Greek god? I like those songs. All right. Is that one of them, right? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, never mind. Oh, Drops of Jupiter. Um, is that Zeus? Wow, yes. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in what U.S. state? Uh, that would be Ohio. Correct. Which car manufacturer uses the slogan, The Power of Dreams? Subaru? No. Hyundai? No. Kia? No. Oh. What late actress played Grandma Annie in the romantic comedy The Proposal? What, what? What late actress? Betty White. Correct. What is the largest living bird? Uh, that would be an owl. No. A uh, toucan. No. An eagle. <laughs> no. The first Cheesecake Factory <laughs> restaurant opened in California in what decade? 70s. Correct. Wow. wow. And with that, Steve, you got seven correct, which barely is a win, seven to six. Wow. Sorry, Franco. All right. I know no it's close. Denied. Why were you all having the giggle fits about my bird answers? Well, because first of all, when I was in Costa Rica and there were two cans, they were very tiny. And thinking of a really large owl... Oh, you said large. Largest living bird. I thought you said oldest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and not that I'm saying that that's the right answer, but that's where my mind went. Okay. I was like, that'd be kind of terrifying to see a really, really large owl <laughs> with their big eyes. <laughs> he would be going, who? He'd be like, what? Yeah. yeah just, Come at me, bro. What? Um, Where's the, the biggest bird? Ostrich. Oh, okay. And what car manufacturer used the slogan, the power of dreams? No idea. Is it Honda? It is Honda. You mm. said Hyundai, and I'm always like, wait, 
What'd you just say? Also, just want to say Meet Virginia by Train is a great song. Thank you. I will stand by that. Meet Virginia? Virginia. You've never heard oh my, it? George had never heard it either, and so then I just kept singing it all night. I noticed it comes as a shock, but I'm not really listening to the music of Train quite a bit he's in my a free cracking, time. He's a cracking guy, man. You, no, gotta, no. you gotta be a big Train fan. He's, he's a local dude, and he's got an incredible voice. Don't get me wrong. Like When they they did like a Zeppelin covers record, that was just like next level. Great. Really? Yeah. I mean, they're... they're I, I'm not questioning like their talent. Yeah. I just don't give a crap about their music. You got to jump I, on the train. Oh. Okay, now you need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think this song was on a Now CD. She never compromises. Loves babies and, and surprises. Wears high heels when she exercises. I wanted she to work. She wears high heels when she exercises. I tried to be like Does that who mean he was singing about. Is she a stripper? <laughs> she got those legs. Is that her stage name? Oh, I've heard. This was, like, on, like, every bad, like, 2000s era, like, teen drama TV show. Now, when you say bad, you mean wonderful? Yeah. Tearing the Gilmore Girls or something. Yeah. Is it it a toe tapper? This is not a toe tapper. (laughs) You don't want to be Virginia? No. (laughs) Well, congratulations, Steve. You won. Yes. And the Olympics are in full swing, Rockaholics. But before the Olympics even started, did you know that there was a competition that was even more prestigious? Oh, yeah. What, did, what was it? I mean, it was Seattle's greatest competitive eating competition, the, mullet, the gullet stuffer. Oh! Congrats, George. No, even more prestigious than that, the mullet championship showdown. From gullets to mullets. And a kid from Port Townsend was part of it. So we're going to chat mullets with Jace Taylor after Billy Idol. The Daily Mix Show. Rockaholics, when it comes to being business in the front and party in the back, PNW's finest is a Port Townsend boy by the name of Jace Taylor who competes in national competitions for the best mullet. Awesome. And we've got Jace on the phone this morning with his mom, Chelsea. Good morning, Jace. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jace. How old are you? Ten. Ten years old, and now for two straight years, you have competed in the mullet competition? Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. So how do they break up the different competitions? Is it by age or? Age. By age. So what what is the group that you compete with, Jace? Ten and nine. Eight eight, Eight, eight to ten, I met. Eight to ten. So what made you want to first get a mullet? Was it something that, like, your parents gave you a haircut that was a mullet and you didn't realize Um, it or? I saw a picture of my dad from the 1980s on the fridge. Awesome. And I had long hair when that happened. And my brother went with some Walmart tri- trimmers when my mom, when my mom, against my mom's request. <gasps> I love Wait, this. So you had your brother shave your, like, or cut the sides of your hair and turn it into a mullet when your mom didn't know you were going to do yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, dude. When I was a kid, I had dog clippers, and I gave myself a reverse mohawk where, like, the mohawk, like, there's two strips on the side but no hair in the middle oh, no. because of a favorite wrestler that I had, Road Warrior Hawk. My mom was not happy about that. How was your mom when you did this? <laughs> Surprise. A little mad, then she got used to it. Jace, I'm assuming your brother doesn't do your haircuts anymore. Who cuts your mullet for you? Megan. She works at the Solo Salon in Port Townsend. That's awesome. So you walk in there and you just say, hey, Megan, can you clean up my mullet a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> do you rock the mullet year round or do you kind of get it trimmed up and ready to go for competition season? Trimmed up, trimmed up and get ready for competition season. So, Jace, I know it turned out you, you weren't able to win this year's mullet competition. But what was the experience like for you? Did you have, where, where did you go and, and, and like how did they treat all of you? Like what was that? Well, share with us the experience of going to the mullet competition. It's like really nerve wracking. Yeah, we make cards and we give it out to people and there's like a little scan thing that they can scan and it takes them to the website. I have a question for you, Jace, because I mean, you said there's all different ages there. Now, I'm, I'm definitely not 10. And I'm, I don't have hair. And if I ever grew my hair out, I've always wanted to grow what they call a skullet. Were there anybody rocking the <laughs> skullets where it's like they're bald on top, but then they got the long hair after that? They do have an adult competition. They do, Chelsea. <laughs> and were there anybody rocking the skullet? 
You know, I didn't see a skull, but you know that that might put you above above the rest. Maybe that's the goal for this upcoming year is for me to get to the mullet competitions and rock the skull. Please do it. Wait, will you please my- let us know when this is? Because my husband has been rocking the mullet for years now. So, oh, so you can have a manner for the adult thing. Yes, it's about time he used this mullet to good use. Oh, right, right. Yeah, no, I definitely will send you a message next year when, when they're gearing up for it. Yes! Chelsea, what was that experience like for you? So you weren't, a, you weren't really into the idea of your kid having a mullet, but then all of a sudden he does, and now you're going off to championship competitions for, for, for this for the last couple of years. What's that been like for you? It's been, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, but it's been actually pretty rewarding because it's built his confidence up, you know, talking to strangers, and so it's been fun. And being that you guys live in Port Towns, and that's not like a huge town, is, has Jace become like kind of a local celebrity in your town? Yeah, I would say so. Aww. When I was going to the Mariners games, there was this one person. Um, last year I was on the news, and this one person at the Mariners game was like, are you the kid from the news? <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. And then you sign autographs. Yep. <laughs> is, uh, is baseball your favorite sport, Chase? Yes. I feel like there's a lot of good mullets in baseball. Baseball and hockey. Yeah. And for those that don't know, this is the Mullet Champ Showdown, and this event supports the Wounded Warrior Project. Is that right, Chelsea? It is, That's yeah. awesome. Yep, it, um, it's a foundation that they've created for homes for wounded war- warriors. All in all, do you know how many people are you know compete in any given year? Well, I know his age group last year, I think there were nine or... 900 kids? Um, 1,000 kids last year, and I and I got um, 80th place. That means I beat 920 kids. That's right. Whoa. You know what? And next year, you're beating 999 kids because you're coming in first place. Let's yeah. go, Chase. <laughs> That's right. Well, we're super, super proud of you for all you're doing out there, putting mullets out into the world. This is just so fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, Chelsea, I have to ask you because you're in Port Townsend. Is there any truth that the town slogan is, we're here because we're not all there? It is, and it's completely adequate. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you so much, Jason, Chelsea. You guys are awesome. Yeah, keep in touch with All us right. when you get ready for the championship next year, and uh, and we'll help we'll help blow it up and let everybody know that they got to vote for our guy, Chase. Jace, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Take care. You too. Bye. You too. Awesome. I, I now I really want to get my husband to cut a mullet. Oh, what about Barrett? Well, you know, his hair's... I'd have to grow it out a little bit. Brad's been growing out his hair off and on for years, so when he does decide to cut it, he's got to do a mullet for at least a couple days. I don't picture Brad as a mullet kind of guy. Well, let me find the photos from the 90s where he was a mullet guy. Yeah, but that back then, that was the thing to do. Now, I don't, I don't see him as being like the unironic, kind of silly <laughs> hipster guy. Like, you know, I think he's got his thing. He's in his 50s now. I don't know if he needs to be mulleting, but I'd Full like to Kenny see Kenny Powers it. with oh the glasses, too. Yeah. Yes. Well, Rockaholics, we know that you are a massive music fan, but do you think you could name a song after only hearing one single second of the chorus? Prove it to us, and if you do, you're going to win tickets to see Megan... Oh, no, it is tickets to see Miles Kennedy at the Neptune Theater on February 20th. 206-803-ROCK. We will play Hook or Shook at 920. The Daily Mix Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Trying to figure out what to eat for dinner yet again? With Northside's and Bullion as your not-so-secret ingredient, you can skip the drive through and do dinner at home. Nor Taste Combos provide a menu of delicious, affordable, and well-balanced meals that you can prepare in 30 minutes or less. Visit nor.com to get quick and easy recipe ideas for your home-cooked weeknight dinners. It's not fast food, but it's so good. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, 
celebrity interviews, or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. The Daily Mix Show presents the Extreme Music Showdown. Let's play hook or shook. Please sign this waiver before we continue. Thank you. We'll drop a one-second snippet of the hook of a song. If you can't name the song, watch out. You're going to get shook. shook. It is time to play the game we call Hook or Shook. Danny will play one second of a hook from a song that he picked, and your job is to guess what that song is. This week, we are playing for tickets to see Miles Kennedy at the Neptune Theater on February 20th, and playing this morning is Jesse from South Hill. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning. What's up, Jesse? You've got to get both of these songs right to win the tickets. The first one, you'll be on your own. And the second one, this is where you can get shook because a member of our show at random has to get it right for you. If not, you will lose. And we will give those tickets to caller nine instead. So let's see who you are playing with. Me, Migs, or Sarah. Right, the wheels are spinning. Just pass your name there, Taryn. Passing your name again. Now will it... Oh, I think it might... It will... It's about to land on Sarah, but no, it stays on Taryn Daly. Barely. Two dog. By a hair. Yeah. I have a new theory that this wheel just hates Steve. <laughs> it, yes. You don't ever get to play. Or likes me because it knows that this game gives me anxiety because the last thing I want to do is lose somebody tickets. That's fair. It's all on how you look at it, man. <laughs> it's perspective. Bra- hashtag perspective, brah. Well, Jesse, are you ready for your first clip? Absolutely. Here we go. Pocket. Of course, oh. now it's the song I absolutely know, though. <laughs> Can I hear it one more time? Mm-hmm. Okay, I, got, I know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I get a hint? Yes. Okay, the lead singer of the band is Rivers Cuomo. Mm-hmm. Is it Weezer Beverly Hills? Ooh! One hint. Nailed it. Let's go, Jesse. All right, Jesse, I'm going to try to bring this home for you so we can send you to Miles Kennedy at the Neptune Theater on February 20th. Awesome. <laughs> Danny, let's... <gasps> oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, can I give a hint? I mean, I don't know. Dumb. <laughs> that would be Canada's own Avril Lavigne and Skater Boy. Congrats, Jesse. You're going to be at Miles Kennedy on February 20th. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. There you go, Steve. You know what the funny thing is, though? Many, 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 many years ago, I can't remember what the theme was. There used to be, uh, we used to play shows, my old band, Peter Parker, and they, someone put together like these theme shows. And I can't remember what the theme was. It was probably just bad songs by bad artists wow. because we covered Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. Oh, I wish I had that video. Oh, I hated every second of it. <laughs> I was outvoted on that one. Well, can I tell you my beef with Avril Lavigne? Yes. She stole my look. Mm. What, the red eye? <laughs> <laughs> no. Does she have a red eye right now like you? No. Okay. I wore a tie to my school picture in middle school. No, sorry, elementary school. I'll have to find the photo. I was rocking a tie way before Avril Lavigne. Mm. I feel like a lot of people are doing that, though. Are you... <laughs> Are you calling me a liar? No, I'm just saying. As a trendsetter? I'm just saying that you weren't the only one. You might have done it before Avril Lavigne. I definitely did it before. What she had? Like the Catholic schoolgirl skirt, was it? And then the. That's Britney Spears. No, but she she also had the baggy pants. She had the baggy pants. Okay. And the, like, the skater shirt with the tie and the backwards hat. Also, they were like low rise pants, right? Like she was showing some hip bones sometimes. I think they were just dickies, but sure. I don't even know how to do a Google search for this without feeling like a creepo. Like, She's right, Avril Lavigne 2000s. Lavigne 2000s? Yeah. 
I, I could have sworn that she had a dress as well. No. I know she had the top. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. a lot, a lot Trust of me, Steve. I've, I I watched that video a lot of times. Do you do, <laughs> for Emo Night, do you do an Avril Lavigne eyeliner tutorial? No. Mm-hmm. I should. Mm-hmm. No, but they. I, I know at, at, at least the Emo Night that we went to in Dallas. Lots of Avril Lavigne. They played Avril Lavigne, and I never wanted to leave quicker. We play Skater Boy, Girlfriend. It's or complicated. She's she's oh, a big hit. Complicated, complicated as well. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's kind of like towards the end of the night because it's a slower song. It's, a, it's her ballad. Yeah, yeah, that's the song to get everyone to leave. I was <laughs> like, let's go before this song finishes. Why are we talking still about Avril Lavigne? Because you love her. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. Well, if we've talked about something other than Avril Lavigne this morning that you want to talk about, Rockaholics, call us up now. 206-803-ROCK. We'll check in with the Rockaholics after Guns N' Roses. The Daily Mix Show. Throughout the morning, we have received phone calls and text messages from our beloved Rockaholics, and we've not yet had a chance to chat with everyone, but right now we are checking in with the Rockaholics. So call us up if there's something you'd like to chime in on from this morning's show, or if there's anything on your mind you'd like to speak with us about, 206-803-ROCK. Earlier this morning, we were talking about crazy things that happened in your neighborhood, and Alicia from Linwood, you want to fess up to the fact that you were the crazy one in the neighborhood. Uh Uh-oh. I do, I do, I do. (laughs) What did you do? I called the cops on my roommate's uncle. Uh, They were in Paris on their honeymoon, and I was the only one home. But in my defense, they did tell me that no one was supposed to have a key to their house. They were also in the middle of a remodel as well. Um, So it was the middle of the afternoon. It sounded like somebody was breaking into the house, uh, like a herd of elephants upstairs. I live downstairs in the basement of their home with my husband. And again, I'm the only one home. No one's supposed to be here. Um, I was texting them, asking them, hey, what's going on? Uh, Again, no no one's supposed to be here. So I run and I lock the doors, everything like that. Um, And then I look out, try to describe the car to them. Not a description that they are aware of. So I call the cops. My husband told me to grab his machete while I'm texting him. Oh, boy. Get on the phone. <laughs> Get on the phone with the police. And they're telling me, if you can make it out of the house safely, go somewhere. So I slide out of our slider, carrying the machete, looking like a hot mess, have my dog in the other arm, and I go <laughs> next door to the vacant house. And all of a sudden, oh I've got, like, seven police SUVs of Linwood Finest on our lot banging up against the house, yelling, police, got their drug, uh, guns drawn, going into the house. And, of course, his poor uncle, uh, which I didn't recognize until he got out of the house, is in handcuffs and uh, had these construction uh, headphones on. He didn't hear a word and could have been shot. Um, or taken out by you with the machete. A little bit. And you should have seen his face because he did apologize to me. And I said, well, that's not my concern. My concern was is that I had a machete. And the look on his face, I mean, they called it there. The list, I, I felt awful. And no. the worst part was they had to call the, my roommates in Paris and be like, hey, you know, it's 2 a.m. your time. But we need to verify that this is indeed your uncle before we give the house back over to your roommate. And my roommate was a little snooty. You know, this is 25 cents a minute. Could you hurry it up? And I'm like, well, dude, you know, I almost killed your uncle. So, you know, it's up to you. Now, are we sure he didn't <laughs> like his <laughs> uncle? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Now, I was a disturbance. Do you still have a machete to this day? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You can never be too prepared. That's insane. <laughs> Wow. I've lived in Linwood. There's been times where like SWAT teams are outside certain houses, and it's always like, "What the hell is going on?" For all I know, it could have been this lady right there, back Wielding in my Linwood machete. days. Yeah, with a crazy lady with a machete and a dog in the other hand. Like that's that's a person you do not mess with. Migs, you've been working in radio for nearly thirty years. No, wow. nearly. No. Uh... <laughs> A stupid Car- question. Carry the one. Not 30 years. <laughs> what would you say was the best career advice <laughs> you received over these past nearly three decades? <laughs> to not work with idiots. <laughs> and I don't take my own advice. No. Here we're, we are. Crazy red eye over here. Well, wow. don't forget. Don't 30 forget years. About 30 years. It's not getting crazy yet. Give the me hawk, a little credit. The hawk to a girl. Don't forget about her. She's still around, and <laughs> how, she just got... How, how can we ever forget about this girl right here? You know what I mean? Oh, you gotta give him that hawk to it. Spit on that thing. 
Well, she just got some great advice in a very random way. And you're going to hear what happened at 950. The Daily Mix Show. Haley Welch, otherwise known as the Hawk Tua Girl, appeared on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast. And they started chatting about her work in a spring factory, as well as her relationship with her family and her love for country music. But at one point, Bill decided to give her some great career advice. What did you think about some kind of TV career? Yeah, yeah, I possibly could. I got some acting classes. Acting? Maybe. Oh, well, this is a twist in the plot. Maybe. I said maybe. I don't know. I'm keeping my options open. I can do it, possibly. You know, you have to be very dedicated. Maybe not acting. Maybe like reality <laughs> TV or something. <laughs> I just I was like, I could do it possibly. I got this. I don't know if I really do. Like she's having a conversation with herself the whole time. I was gonna say after hearing a clip of that, I don't know that I want to listen to his podcast ever. <laughs> oh, dude. Very, he seems very just like whatever. He's stoned. Oh. That's why. Oh, yeah. okay. He gets so b- I've only watched one episode. Shockingly, it was the one when he had Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit. Sure. <laughs> why wouldn't you? Man, that one I needed weed to follow along. Because both of them were just stoned and saying some nonsensical stuff about stuff. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> Wait, where's the hawk to a girl? Oh, <laughs> you, you gotta give him that hawk to it. Spit on that thing. <laughs> and everybody that goes on the show smokes with him, right? Um, I I think that's the hope. I don't know if that's like the rule. I even think Fred Durst, when I watched that one at first, was like, I don't know if I want to, man. I get really, I, I, I really go out there when I get stoned, and then eventually he ends up getting stoned with. But Bill Maher is just smoking joint after joint throughout the entire interview. Wild man. So yeah, I mean, it's funny though because like a lot of people are still giving her, no, when's her fifteen minutes up? I'm like, you know, for the person who is definitely the, I mean, the quintessential fifteen minutes of fame girl, she's been super chill about the success after the fact. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just been like one of those things where it's like, oh, she's kind of a likable girl and she's not really doing anything. She's not harming anyone. All she really wanted to do is make somebody happy and she got famous for that. I think she's charming. Yeah, yeah. I really do. I don't know if she's going to be uh, in any upcoming movies or television shows, though. No. One can only hope. <laughs> no. right. Hard pass on that one, right? <laughs> Police busted. <laughs> Spit on that thing. Police busted a woman in quite possibly the easiest way ever for carrying drugs. And it is next level stupid. We're going to tell you all about it during the Daily Mix download after Incubus. The Daily Mix Show. The Daily Mix Show. Knowledge is power. So give us five-ish minutes and we'll give you uh, some interesting stuff you can talk about at work. This is the Daily Migs Download. A.K.A. the DMD. Here's your daily dose of doings happening in the world. Ryan Castle is here with us. Are you getting excited for the Blue Angels being in town? Is that this week? Already? Yeah. Be yeah. fair, baby. God, it snuck right up on me. I thought we were going to go on your boat. Yes, yes, my boat. <laughs> I have a very nice boat. It's Please. a dinghy. Yeah, it's more it's of a, a boat. dinghy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a uh, boat for seafaring. Mean, it's it's a it's a small one person uh, canoe, but let's do it. All right, well, we'll pack in. The DMV is brought to you by Palace Law. Maybe the Mariners can figure out what the hell they're going to do because well, that third inning was rough yesterday. Gave up seven runs and they just couldn't come back from that. Lost to the Boston Red Sox, fourteen to seven. Wow. Pretty rare that the pitching sucks, but it, it sucked yesterday, and the bats were alive. Got seven runs, but thankfully the Astros lost as well, so we're still tied for first place in the AL West. Back at it again, taking on the Boston Red Sox in Boston. There was some massive excitement at the Paris Olympics with the male gymnasts of Team USA last night. I think everyone is in love with Steven Nedarosik. He took off his glasses and became Superman. He literally looks like Clark Kent and just absolutely dominated the pommel horse. His excellence secured the bronze medal. And this is the first time the guys have medaled since 2008. Here he is talking about it afterwards. I had a good feeling that our team was in a great spot. I just knew I had to go up there and do my job. Right here, I was super worried about my routine and I was like let's just get it done let's go for it and right here I was like if I put this dismount up Team USA gets a medal I think you could see it right away when I land <laughs> oh, dude goosebumps right now man that's the best moment of my life 
I, I appreciate the guy's enthusiasm. I love him. By the way, our medal count, we're up to 20 medals. We have three gold, eight silver, and nine bronze. They also asked him what he's going to do after winning the gold medal, and he said this. He sounds like such a stoner, man. <laughs> he's like, yeah, man, Goosebump City. Hey, cops in Florida, they pulled over a car on Saturday when they saw that the driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt. It's always when something gets pulled over something small that it then yeah. eventually blows up into something bigger. During the traffic stop, they noticed that the passenger, a 41-year-old woman, she was acting kind of weird, moving things around suspiciously. So the cop's like, what's going on? Noticed some drug paraphernalia. They went through her bag, her purse, and what did they find? A bag labeled, quote, bag of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it had drugs in it. Don't you want to like try to not draw attention to yourself <laughs> when you're doing things like that? Well, this bag of drugs had crack cocaine, powdered cocaine, crystal meth, other drugs as well. There was also a needle, some straws, a metal spoon, and four glass pipes. Wow. Bag of drugs. That's her, her drug bag. You know, I have a little box that says contraband on it. Guess what I keep in that? Uh, the Bible. The, hair ties. The, I keep my hair ties in that, you guys. The <laughs> album Contraband. <laughs> that actually would be pretty yeah. awesome. Scott Weiland's greatest hits. Hey, as far as weather, we're hitting a high of 74 degrees. It's going to be cloudy. That is the DMD, and that's what's up. Brian Castle is up next yeah. with your Morning 12 Pack. The Daily Mix Show. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio. Looking for a job is lonely. Endless searching, phone calls that go nowhere, applications that vanish into thin air. What if you could link with dozens of local companies who are hiring right now with just one connection? That's Express Employment Professionals. Find us at expresspros.com. One connection, endless opportunities. And no fees ever for job seekers. Express Employment Professionals. ExpressPros.com. For those in the market for flavor, there's Modelo Spike Tawas Frescas, a flavorful drink that's a modern twist on a Mexican street classic with four vibrant and refreshing flavors pineapple, watermelon, hibiscus, and cucumber lime, made with a splash of real fruit juice. Modelo Spike Tawas Frescas are perfect for any fiesta, small, or big. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas. Boldly authentic, vibrantly flavorful. Drink responsibly. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas flavored beers imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Hibiscus contains juice only for color.